and uh, we should uh, love him with our hearts and uh, serve him equally as well. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you. What a great day. What a beautiful day you've given us. And I pray, God, through your reading in Colossians that you would remind us of just how wonderful you are. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, which we yield ourselves to today. And I pray, God, today that as you fill me with your Holy Spirit, that the words I speak and the meditation of my heart would be that of yours, and that the words that I offer today would be from your throne to your church. And we ask that all this happen now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. This is my last sermon. We've been for four weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit within the church and within, within the context of our personal lives as believers. And it's been wonderful for me to prepare these sermons because it has reminded me again and again of the depth of love that God has for us and that the power of the Holy Spirit within the life of the believer is completely amazing and overwhelming as we consider the, how God moves in this world and in our personal lives. And I hope and pray that you have at least a little better understanding about the work of the Holy Spirit and how valuable how necessary the Holy Spirit is to our daily lives. Uh, Paul's encouragement to the Colossian church was simply this. In verse 6, he said, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And when it's all said and done, and when we consider life itself, and as we consider loving the Lord, when we trim away everything else that encompasses our walk with the Lord, it is our, we are left with our goal, our one task, the one thing that we wish to do more than any other thing is to walk in Him. That's our goal for life as Christians. We simply want to walk every day in Jesus Christ to the fullest extent that God enables us to do that. And when we think about the Holy Spirit and everything the Spirit does in our world and in our lives, those words to me best describe everything that I've been talking about over the past four weeks. Knowing how to walk in Jesus. Wow. Today I want to use our scripture to help us all see how the Holy Spirit enables us to do that. Because without the Holy Spirit, we would have no hope we would have no possibility of walking in the Spirit of Christ. We would have no means by which we could live every day in Him. And we want to be able to do that. The Holy Spirit enables us. Think for a moment what a difference this world would, would be or, or, or what a difference it would make in this world. What a difference it would be in this church if every single one of us here today, and, and I'll even include those that are out traveling around this weekend, if, if in our church, as we know it, if we were all here, if every single one of us walked in Jesus to the fullest that God intends us to walk in Him, what difference would it make in the life of our church? What difference would it make in your home, what difference would it make within our community? Man, it would be awesome. And I know what you're thinking. Boy, I hope that person sitting next to me is listening to him this morning. But it's for you, not the person next to you. It's for me. 
because we all need to understand how important it is for Christians to be Christians. How important it is to our nation, especially today, for us to walk in the fullness of the Spirit and show the world the Christ that we know in our hearts. It could change everything if God's people would just be God's people and would live that life that Christ has called us to live. If we can do that, we can transform our lives in a wonderful and meaningful way. And I simply want to touch on a couple of things today, actually three things, that I think Paul is trying to tell this church, the Colossians, uh, that he wants them to understand about walking in him. And I want to relate this to the Holy Spirit because it is the task of the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ to the world through our lives and by the way that we live. And the first of those things that we have got to grasp is to be firmly rooted in the Christ that we love and that we want to serve. For us to walk in him, we must be firmly rooted, but even beyond that, we need to have deep roots into God. We need to deeply be firmly rooted into the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one who cultivates the depth of our roots and the strength of our roots within our lives. As you might already know, the root system of any plant or tree is the lifeline that enables it to grow and exist in the strength that it needs in this world. And the same is true for Christians. The root system that we have in God, the root system and the depth and the firmness of those roots determine how well we can serve Jesus how well we are going to represent him today. When we leave this church today and we're going to our homes or we're going out to eat or you're going to whatever you're going to do and then this next week when you're working, I want you to know that for you to show Christ, you have got to have your roots set deep in him. Because if not, any wind that blows will push you one way or the other. And if you're not careful, it will topple you completely. Root system for the Christian is a necessary part of our life. And the reason the Christian needs to be deeply rooted in Christ is perfectly explained in the parable of the sower. In Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, verse 20, 21. And the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no firm what? Root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately falls away. That's why it is so necessary for us to be deeply rooted in the Lord. Why? Because of the warnings that God gives us in regards to trials and tribulations in difficult times. Is there anyone here who has not had a trial, a tribulation, or a difficult time with life? Or with a person sitting next to you? <laughs> or with kids, or with parents? or with friends, or with work. If the Bible promises you anything, and it promises us a lot, it does say, Jesus said, you will have trials and tribulations in this life. And if the seed that God has thrown into your life and cast into your life falls on rocky places where roots cannot be firmly established, then when those difficulties come against you, 
you will not be sustaining in your own life. You will fall and falter in your effort to serve Jesus and to walk with him. A good root system is necessary for survival in this world, folks. We have got to be deeply grounded in kingdom things. Because you are definitely going to face troubles in this life. That's the nature of the world, trouble. And you don't have to look for it. It will find you out. Because it's there. Once again, the Holy Spirit is responsible for enabling us to succeed and not fall away from these difficulties in life. Why? Because we are deeply rooted in Christ. We are dependent upon Him for our life's existence and our life's blood. How does the Spirit do that? In several ways. How does the Spirit create this root system? By teaching us the things God wants us to know. Jesus told his followers this in John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. See, the Holy Spirit does that. And that's the joy, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to bring to our remembrance. When you hit that brick wall in life, the Holy Spirit will say, remember, you're, a more, than, you're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthened you. You can do all things through God because he loves you. We're, we're more than conquerors. Because of Christ. And you see, we got to remember those things. And we run into problems when we don't think of that when difficult times come. When we begin to look around how we can care for this. Or how, how am I going to get by this? How am I going to be able to deal with this difficulty in life? And then we begin to struggle with ourselves and do it ourselves. And we neglect to involve God in it. Man, that's a, that's a, that's a formula for failure. The Holy Spirit reminds us when we confront these things that I'm a child of God and I can do all things because of God in my life. The words Jesus spoke, the truth his life bore witness to is our key to overcoming and the Holy Spirit is the one that does all of that in our life. All of it. The Holy Spirit also guides us through life by being our conscience when making decisions. All of us in life have made poor decisions from time to time. There's not a person sitting here that has made a right decision every time. Sorry to tell you that. But we all make poor decisions in life. Choices that have only served to complicate our life rather than make it more simplistic. And the Holy Spirit is the convicting spirit in our lives that lets us know when we've done something wrong. Anybody here know that feeling? It's one of those oops moments. <laughs> when you say something, you do something, you act upon something, you think something, you make something happen, and then God says, uh-uh, that's not what I would have you to do. You see, we, we say our conscience is, is convicting, but it's, it's not your conscience. Man, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God saying, whoa, wait a minute. Let's rethink this. This is not what God would have you to do. And he calls us back to a place of righteousness when we step out and make those mistakes in life that are going to create problems for not just us, but for the people around us who have to suffer the things that we do. 
If we are to ever reach our goal of walking in Him, we've got to realize this in our life. And we need to say, thank you, Holy Spirit. These are not bad moments. These are good moments. When God catches us and says, wait. These are good things. The Holy Spirit builds us up. Not only do we have to have firm roots, but we need to be built up. It's not enough to be deeply rooted. We've got a heart that needs to be built up. We've got a spiritual life that needs to grow. The root system sustains this, but the result of a deep root system is, is Christian growth. In growing in the likeness of Christ and walking in Him and being a part of Him. We need to be established, I guess, is a good way to put that. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit as well. To establish us in Christ. And if we are to ever reach our goal of walking in Him, we have got to be determined to see that happen in our life. We can't stop being established. We can't think to ourselves, I am there because we are not. And this process begins at conversion and it will continue to you see Jesus face to face. Daily, the Holy Spirit works to establish our lives in Christ and to strengthen our understanding of who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit works to empower, guide, sanctify, comfort, and encourage us in our daily walk. Today, as we sit in this church, the Holy Spirit is working in your life to do those very things. To encourage the discouraged, to sanctify the unrighteous, to call us to do good things. The Holy Spirit ministers continuously. There's not a time of the day that the Holy Spirit is not at work in your life, and that's even when you're asleep. And by the way, that includes both good and bad experiences in life. The Holy Spirit does those things. And I was sharing this morning, in fact, some of the greatest teaching moments in life don't come from our greatest successes, but our greatest failures. And we grow either way. Because Romans 8, 28, what does that tell us? And we know that God causes all things to work together for good. All things, not good things, but all things, good, bad things, work together to those who love God and to those who call, or are called according to His purpose. So if you've accepted God, there's not an unteachable moment in your life. We learn every day from the Holy Spirit how to be more Christ-like. We learn from the Holy Spirit how we can show Christ to the world. Even in our failures, we learn how to do that. It's not always pleasant when the Holy Spirit is at work establishing us, is it? The Holy Spirit can be very disciplining in our life. But it always works for good. And it always helps us to show Christ. It's always beneficial. It's always very reassuring to us that the Holy Spirit is a part of our daily life. I am so thankful to God that when Jesus left, he didn't say, you're on your own. <laughs> but he said, I, he said, in fact, he said, it's more bene beneficial for me that I go, for you that I go away, that I might send a helper to live with you every day and to teach you how to be kingdom children. Last thing I want to mention this morning is the Holy Spirit helps us to be able, what, what the Holy Spirit helps us to be able to do is to be overflowing with gratitude to God. 
overflowing with gratitude to God. Now understand, gratitude is not always expressed as joy and happiness. Okay? Don't confuse gratitude with joy and happiness because there's a little bit of difference. Verse 7, the last part of it, says, established in your faith just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. If we are truly walking in Jesus, we should without exception have gratitude in our heart for what God has done for us. The deeper my roots go into Jesus, the more the Holy Spirit establishes me in Jesus each day, the more gratitude I have in my life for God. You know why? And it's going to sound maybe a little different. But my gratitude increases because the deeper my roots get into the Lord, the more I learn about Jesus, the more I learn about the Holy Spirit, the more I understand about God working in my life, the more I realize how undeserving I am to have all that. And how unworthy I am to even call myself a child of God were it not for the grace 